it's system review time and today we're looking at this how do you pronounce this I'm gonna say Sishion V88 4k Android TV box uh, I'll read out the um, system specifications and such like if you're interested in that kind of thing it is running Android 5.1 so not the latest but not a creaking relic either CPU is a uh, RK3229, it is a uh, 1.5 gigahertz quad core. The GPU is a Mali 400. It has one gigabyte of RAM. It says ROM, eight gigabytes. That bugs me because it's not ROM, it's internal storage. And while it says eight gigabytes, after the installation of the operating system and the default apps, you get just under five gigabytes free to install the apps of your choice. You can plug in an SD card, it has a maximum capacity of 16 gigabytes um, and when I say SD card I do mean SD card and not micro SD. Um, it has Wi-Fi, um, it doesn't have Bluetooth. So let's have a look at the box itself. We've looked at this previously in the unboxing but you know just in case you didn't see that and if you didn't, why not? But no. Um, this is of interest. The, the not micro. The SD card slot here. You put the card in, and that is going to stick out. That's the way it is. Um, yeah. It works. It's just a bit untidy. USB slots. You've got four of them, which is cool and quite generous and I think actually is good because um, you're likely to you're gonna potentially want to use say one for a joypad if you want to do some gaming you're going to want to use one to plug in one of these and we'll look into that later um, but that still leaves you a couple of them free and given that you can only have a maximum SD card capacity of 16 gig and the internal storage is limited, you can plug one of these things into it, which is a uh, USB memory stick type thing. That's a nice dinky one, obviously you can get bigger ones, but anyway, yeah, so you can have a bit more storage. So, coming round to this side, another USB slot, SPDIF, which I am reliably told is a digital audio output, AV. I guess that would be, you know, you can get those, um, a lead, it would be a jack socket thingy, jack plug goes in there and out you get the three way, is it composite? Apologies for not knowing, but I don't know. HDMI, Ethernet, 5 volt power. And that's your lot in terms of what plugs into it. You've got the remote control that comes with it, which is cool. Um, it is I've got to be honest I, I find this peculiar the way it works certain certain features that you would expect aren't there while others that you wouldn't expect and maybe don't need are um, and we will look at that when I plug this thing in um, responsiveness wise it's not great You've really got to be pointing directly at the box. I mean, I, I've, had, I've been using it downstairs in the living room and I have found responsiveness to be... It, it works, but um, I found I was having to lift it up quite high and point it directly at it. You can't just point it in the general direction and have it reliably work. So, not great. It does work, but it will kind of annoy you. Um... Let's move into the games room so I can plug this in and we'll have a look at it going. Okay, so here we are with the Android box turned on. And this is the default interface. It's the kind of thing that's popular or common on a few Android devices. Uh, it sort of looks a bit like Windows 10, but it isn't. Um, point at the box, can you hear me? I'm clicking away, pointing at the TV and obviously it's not working because the TV box is not directly in front of me. Point at the box, there we go. Um, so, you've got various different categories and you would think they would all be very different. Online video, well you've just got Kodi. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a bit. 
My recommended. Yeah, okay. Cody, your music and your browser. Settings, okay. Um, local, well that seems to do different things in different circumstances that are sort of not especially well defined because on occasion that's had music in there and uh, I don't understand. You've got, you've got, you've got music in there, you've got music in, no you haven't, but there occasionally is music in there. You've got music just there, but you've also got music down there and it's this kind of repetition um, you get just getting the same stuff everywhere isn't this setup to me is nonsensical um, apps these are some of these I installed myself and some are default basically if you see gaming there I I installed it um, and everything else is is the default um, and it's it's pretty standard stuff uh, we will look at the gaming stuff in a little bit. This is interesting. Super SU, Super User. I believe this box has root access. I don't mess around with things like that, but the fact that it's there is interesting. Right. Now, we are looking at this in the default view. Let's go over to settings because you can do it differently. Uh, where did I do it? Home. Right, you can have Launcher 3, which is the default, not the, it's, it's the view, desktop, whatever, that I like to use on most of my Android devices, but it's not especially suited to uh, this, because here we are, I can't actually now get over to my main window using the, uh, the remote control. There is, let's see there is an option on here somewhere that will allow you to do mouse control on this remote. Let's try that. Will it will it give us... Yeah, okay. The, this is using the cursor... Can you... You're not going to see. I'm using the, uh, the direction buttons on the remote to move the mouse slowly, slowly, slowly. Across we go. Uh, no, it's not actually going to go across. That is just really quite irritating. The thing with this, and I'm finding this a lot on um, TV boxes, you're using an operating system that is designed for a touch screen. Only we don't have a touch screen. And um, mouse controls, be it emulated via a clicky remote control or using a, a little keypad with a touchpad it just doesn't effectively emulate a touch screen and that makes for an awkward experience that doesn't always work so what about the apps then here's the thing this is a tv box its primary use is for watching streaming TV programs and such like on your telly and if we look at the apps that are installed you've got Netflix I haven't tried that because I don't have a Netflix account do you notice anything we've got Kodi um, how about Freeview how about iPlayer how about all four. How about ITV Hub? How about My5? You won't find any of them on here. Never mind not pre-installed. They're not compatible. That is not good. Because they're all legitimate. They are legal. They're what they're what the BBC and ITV and Channel 4 and Channel 5 and all of those companies give you for free so you can watch their stuff legally. Nope, can't use them. What you've got is Kodi, which um, interestingly it is, uh, shall we say, fully loaded. It is pre-loaded. If this was sold in the UK by a UK seller, they would be liable to 10 years in prison for selling you this. 
You can, though, use Kodi legally. Kodi itself is legal to use, um, provided you're using things like the iPlayer. You can you can do iPlayer. That is good that you've got iPlayer on here because you can't have the iPlayer app. Um, Sci-fi, that's fine. YouTube, that's fine. TED, documentaries, all of that, fine. Um, there's a Freeview app on here as well. Obviously, you've got other things that are uh, pre-installed. Some of the pre-installed ones are actually defunct and don't work anymore, but oddly, you can't delete them. Uh, I find that odd. Um, this also, this version of Kodi is Jarvis. It's not the latest one. The latest one is Krypton. Um, I'm not actually even sure if this will let you install Krypton. I'm going to have a go now and see if it will let me. Okay, that's odd actually. I've just come back from the, um, the Android Play Store and it says I have the latest version of Kodi fitted, installed. Um, but it's what I've got on here is Jarvis, not Krypton. So that's odd. I don't know what to make of that. Um, yes. So, that is the video side of things. What else can it do? How is it for gaming and emulation? Well, where should we start? It will do SNES quite adequately. Let's, uh, let's load that up. Right. Ah, that's interesting. It's, it's returned us back to where I was playing previously. A couple of days ago. Yesterday? Something. Yeah. But, uh... It works. It, it will do Super Mario Kart. And, well, basically snares emulation. Quite adequately. Shame about the player. But, uh, yeah. So that's pleasing. There are quite a few emulators. This this is the first one I tried, and it worked. So I'm like, yeah, that'll do. It does have flaws and pitfalls on this emulator. The way it organises game files, it's like if you've got loads and loads of different files, it listing it is a pain in the ass. But the emulation itself is all right. Right. Let's bang out of that. Please. Point at the box. Okay. Now, I want to do Mega Drive. And this is where we have difficulty. I have tried many, many standalone Mega Drive emulators on here. Not respond. Oh, oh, now it's responding to the joypad. Thank you. Load content. Finding where the uh, the content is actually stored was... It's... Not easy. I had to do a lot of hunting <laughs> to find it. Uh, Mega Drive. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll just... Okay, we'll do Sonic the Hedgehog. Why not? So... The first thing you see is a whole load of crap all over the screen because this is designed for use with a touch screen. If you had a touch screen, you would, uh, you would click that and all of this would disappear. But I don't have one. I've got a, a mouse pointer, but it doesn't respond to the mouse pointer. Um, so that's a problem. Now, start button. Oh, it will actually start, that's good. Can we play the game? Will it respond to the normal buttons? Yes, it will. That's good. So you can play, but you can't get rid of all the crap, which is a bit annoying. And it's obviously the same with the 32X. Um, select, what will that do? Nothing. Um, um, no, there is just, I can't find a way to get rid of all that stuff. Uh, that being the case, I now also can't find a way to get out of the game. Uh, let's see, escape on the keyboard. Oh, that w okay. 
<laughs> Escape on the keyboard exits the emulator. Um, yeah, so I've, I've got to be really fair. I haven't spent an age tinkering with the options in um, RetroArch, so it may be possible somewhere there that you can get rid of all those things outside of the emulation in, in, a, in a setting. I haven't found it, I have looked, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not there, but what it really is, what that's demonstrating is uh, that particular emulator is designed for use with a touch screen. It doesn't respond well to not having a touch screen. It, it, and that is a problem I'm finding with this TV box and to a degree the other TV box as well. The, Android is a weird thing when it comes to gaming in that you've got emulators that are designed to emulate a gaming system that has physical controls but you're emulating it on a system without physical controls. So they substitute physical controls with touchscreen controls. But then on a TV box you have a system with physical controls running software designed for hardware without physical controls that's designed to emulate hardware with physical controls. Do, do, do you follow me? I mean that's a very very convoluted thing but what it ends up as is a mess. It doesn't work well on a TV box if it's not designed, if the, get, if the emulator isn't programmed to respond to physical controls. Um, yeah I'm going round and round in circles and talking myself into a mess but do you follow me? Um, I've got a mouse just here and I'm trying to use it to uh, control what's on my screen and that's not working. So anyway, uh, RetroArch, not good. Now you would think, okay, so Mega Drive on there, not ideal. Run another Mega Drive emulator then. Yeah, uh, no, can't do it. Not properly. Um, I've tried about four different standalone emulators, ones that I have used on other devices and which work fine on other devices. On here, they either don't work at all or they flip the screen vertically so as if it was a phone um, and that's not what you want. And then when you finish playing your game in your squashed up vertical screen, you can't flip it back to horizontal like this without resetting the box. That's not great. PlayStation emulator. That works okay. You'll, you'll need to configure your joypad, but it works. MAME emulator. Again, you're going to need one of these to uh, press your F5 and, and stuff. Is it? F no, it's not F5. 5 and 1. To put your coins in, uh, you can probably configure it so that that will respond to your joypad, but I was having a bit of trouble. But anyway, um... N64, Mupen64, this is my go-to emulator for emulating the N64. Uh, we'll resume, why not? Okay, I've turned the volume down because Nintendo. Uh, yay! So this works, but keep watching and I think you'll find... Certainly when I was playing it last night, it started running into trouble. Uh, find out, yeah, how do we get rid of... Drop your banana! Can't find the right button. There we go. No. There we go, it wasn't the control I was expecting. Uh, you know, it's, it's playing nicely at this moment, which is good. Last night I was running into problems. It's not doing it now, it's going to make a liar of me. Where it, it was glitching and stopping and... Mm, is it starting to do it now? It would... Yeah, drop frames, but it would drop a frame that was like dropping for a half a second or so. The game itself was continuing, but the screen had frozen. Uh, it is making a liar of me now by playing reasonably well. So, there are, I mean, the thing with this emulator is there are settings and things that you can tinker with, plugins and the like for graphics. So, it is probable that you can have a decent N64 experience on this box. And that's good because. Yeah, a little bit of skipping there. 
Mario Kart is a great game, even if I play it like a total doofus. Mm. Yeah, I have, you know, I've got reservations about it, but I think it's capable. Not keen on the graphic thingies, the, or, or, you know, all this. Is it possible to get rid of that? Mm. I tried loading Raycast to emulate the Dreamcast, and it, well, it launched, but when I came to try to navigate, um, as soon as I, like, pressed the up button icon thing to try and go up a level to get onto the SD card and out of all of the internal storage, it crashed. And I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and I could not navigate to where the, um, the file, the game files were stored. So, uh, Rycast, even though this thing may have the CPU power to run it, something about it, I don't, I don't know if it's the emulator or if it's this, I mean, I've run Rycast on other systems and not had a problem navigating to the external storage, so, whatever, you're not going to emulate Dreamcast on here. Um, but all is not lost because you've got native Android gaming and I think that's going to work pretty well so long as it's a game that will respond to a joystick that's been plugged in. I'm going to edit here and... Okay, now I've skipped all the loading because you don't want to watch that but here, here's the thing, I'm going to... Helpful tip, if you like. When it's loading, it does all the usual loading screen. You've got the music playing, and then it gets to, like, the last 1%. And you think, right, it's just about loaded now, and the music stops, and the progress bar stops. And you think, great, loaded, let's go. And then nothing happens, and you wait a bit, and nothing happens, and you wait a bit longer, and nothing happens, and you think, damn it, it's crashed. And you'll probably be waiting about two minutes and thinking, oh, I'm just going to have to reset this thing, aren't I? And then it loads up. Um, I find that odd, I find it disconcerting, I was ready to reboot the thing, um, and then the game loaded. It's worth just keeping in mind, that's not a criticism, it's something to be aware of, you'll be thinking, this game doesn't work, but it does. Press Y to get on your bike. Okay, I just... I don't want that, get off. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I don't want to redefine my controls. These will do just fine. It is your basic standard Android experience if you're play, play, playing Grand Theft Auto. Now, some of you will have noticed I had trouble whilst playing this on, um, what was I playing it on? I was playing it on the uh, Mi Pad 3 and it was glitching and bugging out and all kinds of nasty things. On here, it plays just fine. It's silky smooth, um, no problem whatsoever. And that to me is great because it's cheap to buy on Android. It's a great game. It runs well. Plug in a, uh, a, a Xbox 360 type joypad and Bob's your uncle. You can play Grand Theft Auto. And that, that to me, bonus points. I'm... I'm happy about that. Um, yeah, may, maybe I'm not ever so demanding in my gaming requirements on an Android box, but it's like everything else might fall down and fail, but if it will play this, I can waste an awful lot of hours playing this, and I don't mean like even following the storyline, just twatting about, because there's a lot of fun to be had by twatting about. Yeah, okay. Let's run over the granny and then I'm going to bang out of it. Yeah, okay. Didn't really do the job. Point at the box. There we go. So, I'm going to move back into the other room and talk to the camera. And uh, talk about what I actually think about this. Because from, if, you've been, if you've not like left the video already and thought this guy is just talking rubbish and doesn't know what he's doing... Um, that's frequently true, but it would sound like I don't like this thing because I have fairly ripped into it for the things that it fails to do. But it's not that simple, and I will elaborate in a moment. Oh, bad hair day. <laughs> what the heck? So, um, the shish 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 shishion. 
V88 4K Android TV box with SD card sticking out on the side. Yeah, it will sound to you like I really don't like this thing because I have been quite harsh in pointing out all of the things that I don't like. Uh, the interface is, to my mind, daft. Um, it's trying to look a certain way but its actual functionality hasn't really been considered properly so you're just getting a lot of repetition and the same thing in different places and there's no need for that. It's like, don't make it look a, th a certain way for the sake of fashion if it doesn't add to the functionality. Um, but you can go to a normal Android type interface but you will need one of these to really make that work. Um, it, it's not ideal. But anyway, it's something you'll just you'll find a way of working with it. It's not a catastrophe, it's just a bit meh. Um, emulation-wise, it is... I don't think it is the fault of this thing that a lot of emulators on this are clunky or don't... Okay, no, it is the fault that some of them don't work in that they just plain won't run. Um, I, I do blame this for that. Um, something to do with the chipset maybe, something to do with, with the way, I don't know, the implementation of the operating system, I don't know. But some of it is not this thing's fault. Some of it is down to the fact that a lot of Android emulators, indeed a lot of Android software in general, is designed to be used with a touch screen. And by its very nature, this thing doesn't have a touch screen, so you're always going to run into problems and you can't blame the box for that unless you want to blame the very concept of a box running Android on a TV. Um, it's just, it's to be expected. Um, so, the fact that apps like iPlayer won't run on this, I think is ludicrous. It's, it's like, what were they thinking? Didn't they check that? Why on earth not? Those are important apps that for a TV box I consider to be essential. And maybe their thinking is, well, it doesn't matter because you've got Kodi. And that is true. Anything you could view on those things, you can view on here. If you were wanting to do catch-up and watch something that you've missed, you'll be able to find it on one of the various Kodi plugins, be it a Kodi plugin of, like, Freeview, because you can do catch-up on there, or, or one of the uh, less... Um, legal plugins, you'll find it all. It's, the fact that it has a fully loaded Kodi is, um, you know, do you care about that? <laughs> That's up to you. Um, that is what this thing is. Never mind an Android TV box, it is a Kodi box. It is a fully loaded Kodi box. And on top of that, it's a £20 Kodi box. Um, it is the kind of thing, it's like, I've got a Raspberry Pi, it's got Kodi on it and a whole load of other stuff. And it is actually more versatile, if less powerful, than this. And that's a Raspberry, Raspberry Pi 2. Um, I configured the whole thing, set it up, and it, it does a lot of stuff. But it is probably less powerful than this, in terms of raw CPU power. Um, but the versatility is great, but I had to configure that and set it up and do it all myself. And it costs more. Um, I, it was probably like £50 to get the whole thing set up and, and whatever, and took a lot of jiggery-pokery and setting up. This thing, £20, straight out of the box, fully configured, you've got Kodi already installed with all the plugins you might want, and a few you might not, um, plug it in, turn it on, and you can watch stuff on your telly. And that is the thing. It's cheap, and it works out of the box as a Kodi box. And I think that is what people who buy this will be buying it for. Um, or rather, that's who it's targeted at. If you're a person like me, you'll just try and do as many different things with it as you possibly can to see what it can do or not do, because it's fun to do that. Um, it's not rubbish. It's not. It, it, it can do plenty of things. Nothing that there is fun to be had from just trying all kinds of different things on it and see what can you do with it. 
Um, flawed, but it is so cheap, it doesn't matter. If you want a fully loaded Kodi box, dirt cheap, this does that. And um, I think that's what they're aiming for. And in that sense, I, I think they've achieved their goal. Um, not versatile, but it's so cheap it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I just want to close by saying thank you to Gearbest and Tony at Gearbest who sent this to me to review. Full disclosure, I didn't buy this with my own money. So if you'd like to buy one of these from Gearbest, there are links down below that you can click and it will take you to the page. And thank you for watching. You there, peasant. See that subscribe button? Be a good pleb and just click it. There's a good uh, oik. I guess you would have a, a, a duh. edit. Can't speak with any great knowledge on the. God, <laughs> drooling on myself. <laughs> uh, yeah.